Hey everybody, today we are going to be working on my brand new brackish tank, although at the moment it is just sitting there full of fresh water. If you're wondering why the water appears to be cloudy, that is because it is. I took the uh, biofilter off of my 29 gallon miscellaneous tank and just gave it a good rinse in this tank. Uh, mainly because as I was changing the filters out, I realized that the biofilter was getting a little uh, thick and clogged and was in need of a rinse anyway. So why not just go ahead and put some of that bacteria in this tank because I'm going to be cycling it in fairly soon. Now I have ordered my filter. I'm not using anything that's on the original tank. I've ordered a new filter that won't be here till later next week. It's on back order at the moment. I've ordered new substrate. And I'm going to actually, as I cycle this tank in, I'm going to slowly increase the salinity. And that way I think it'll have a little less shock on the plants that I'm going to put in here because this is going to be a planted brackish tank as well. So we'll get into discussing those kind of details later. Uh, today one thing I want to do, since I am not going to use anything that's in the original brackish tank, we need to go rock collecting and it's a beautiful, beautiful day out. So the next part of this video is going to be in the great outdoors and we're going to go to one of my favorite spots and collect some rocks for this tank. And since I'm basically starting from scratch, we'll have to get a fair amount of them. So I'm going to go to a different spot than I went last time uh, that should provide me with a lot more pickings uh, and I'm going to take a bucket with me. And uh, we're going to go get to see my process of finding some cool rocks and then maybe the tail end of this video we'll be uh, maybe putting some rocks in there or getting started with them or something like that. So let's see where we go from here and the next time I see you we are going to be outside. Alright everybody here we go. Uh, we're only going about five or six miles down the road to a place I know. I'm not going to film the whole way. Alright everybody this is where we went. On well, my last video, we're about a half mile from our house down here on my street. over Falls Road and we're heading east on Beckleysville and we're just about halfway to our destination and we're now crossing the Mason-Dixon line. Bridge. If you follow me on Google Plus, you will be familiar with seeing this bridge. I take a lot of pictures of this. The boat launch is not far from here, and I have quite a few areas within sight of this bridge that I like to fish from. So I often photograph that bridge, but from a different perspective than the middle of the road as we just saw it. circa 1918 and every time I've ever searched for that all I get is one photograph from Flickr and that's it. I can find no other information on that building at all. I have no idea what that is. Right and just up here on the left is where we're going to pull over and we got a little trail to walk down and we will be where I want to be. But here we are on the side of the road. Actually it looks like we're already getting to start to see some autumn colors a little bit. But our path leads down this way, not very far, and we will be at the water. There's actually a, a monitoring station down here, and I'm not exactly sure the details of what they look for, but there is um, right here 
a way that they're able to see, I guess, the water flow, the depth, the volume, that sort of thing. But we are actually going over there, and hopefully this is not going to be more of an action video than I want it to be. So, we are only putting rocks in a little 20 gallon standard size. It's not a 20 long. So we don't need anything huge, but I do need different types of rocks. I need rocks that are going to be more structural and upright, but they also need to be um, stable enough that they don't wobble or rock around because I don't actually secure my rocks together in any way. I simply stack them in there. So my foundational rocks have to be not only um, stable enough on the bottom, how they sit on the glass, but the upper surface of them has to be in such a way that other rocks can pile on top of them and not be wobbly or loose. So here's a good one right here. And all of this stuff you can see on there is all living things and little crustaceans and so all of this stuff's going to have to be cleaned up considerably before I do anything with it. So that one's definitely coming with us. And a couple more like that. And then some flat rocks and I should be good. I don't need a lot. I'm not going to really go elaborate on this tank. I just want to make sure that uh, Butterbean has a nice little cave for himself to hide in. Thin enough. It's too big. It's a little too big as well. It's almost overwhelming. I'm spoiled for choice here. Now this looks like it would make for a nice rock. That's kind of what I'm looking for there. flat, fairly round, fairly small. Uh, that's a possibility and if I don't use it in this tank I could use it somewhere else so that can come home with us. Uh, that's a little thicker than I want but not bad. Again, a little thicker than I'm looking for. There's enough stuff around here that if I'm patient and I wait for it, I can actually find pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. Again, these are just a little thicker than I want. The flat rocks are the easy ones to find. It's the ones that have the, uh, you know, the structural rocks that are more squared off that I'm looking for. Those are a little more uh, challenging to find. Uh, that looks like a good one. Interesting colors, lots of nooks and crannies. So that one can come back with us. Uh, I suppose that one can come back with us. And that can definitely come back with us. So that is more than enough structural rocks at this point. Now it's time to find some flat ones. That's a nice one there. It doesn't hurt to get some round, longer rocks too. So we'll bring that one back. That's another nice flat one that's got a little bit of a curvature on the inside here. All right, I think that'll do it. And we'll throw that one in for good measure. 
all right everybody this is graves run I do like coming here this is actually a good trout fishing stream if you make your way upstream about a half mile the water gets a little bit colder and we have uh, introduced brown trout that breed here so we can actually fish for trout year-round uh, if you know where to look in this area so I'm off to the house again and the next time I see you we will be in the fish room All right, everybody, here it is later in the evening. I have actually got all of the rocks prepped and ready to go, but I have decided to wait. I'm gonna wrap this video up just by simply looking at the rocks before we put them in the tank. And the reason being is I don't have any substrate for the tank yet. I've ordered it and I'm waiting for it to show up. And I debated whether or not to put the rocks directly on the bottom on bare glass or to put them on the substrate. And I've decided I'm gonna put them on the substrate. Uh, for reasons of space. I don't want them so deep down in the substrate that the caves are half filled with uh, you know the substrate I'm getting. So I'm gonna nestle the rocks down in once I get that and we'll do a separate video of that all together. But in the meantime now that these are cleaned and dried we can get a little better look at them. So rocks like this can sit sort of in this direction um, this rock has some nice curvature there. So a rock like that you can either use to go in a corner space somewhere, you can use that as the inside. Uh, if we put it somewhere, say similar to this, you can then use it to do something simple like that. You can also use these as rocks to prop this way, and then you can prop other rocks that way. Uh, this is another good one that's got a lot of indent and curvature in there. So that would be a good one to use in this sort of direction along with that one. And now, if you make sort of a cave-like structure out of it. And I'm just on this roughly with one hand. I didn't really spend any time prepping for this, as you can probably tell. Uh, just to give you an idea of the different ways you can do this, that makes for larger interior space in the cave. It seems larger on the outside, but because of this curvature here and that curvature there, it gives the fish more room on the inside. It makes it more visually appealing and interesting. Uh, you can then use these smaller but more structural rocks to put on top once you've got other rocks and then you can again either lean this way or that way. Uh, I like the rocks before I put them in. You can see the different colors and the different textures. Um, once they've been in the tank for a little while the off walks tends to grow on them to the point where you can't really see much of the uh, original coloration or anything of the rocks and of course I didn't do a super thorough job I didn't scrub them with a wire brush to get them down to you know bare rock so they do still have a lot of stuff on them uh, did boil them for about 20 minutes I had to do it in two batches because they wouldn't all fit in the pot uh, but I did boil each batch for about 20 minutes so I'm confident that there is no living uh, tissue or living anything on this rock at all so this is what I've got to work with in a couple of days when my substrate gets here uh, we will actually start putting this in the tank and we will see what we can do with it in there. Uh, I also have a lot of that java fern that came out of my garami tank. That's not necessarily all going to go in this tank, but a lot of that is probably going to go in there. Uh, some of it will be tucked in between the rocks and the cave structures and some of it will be uh, tucked in and growing into the substrate directly and then we'll see about whether or not we're going to put any woodwork in there. So I hope you enjoyed this one and look forward real soon when my substrate shows up to getting it actually scaped and then after that we will start the discussion about the actual brackish water and how to make brackish water, why we need brackish water and so on and so forth. So thanks for watching this one. If you're not already subscribed please go ahead and do so. That way you won't miss anything I got coming up and you're definitely going to want to see how we get these rocks situated in there. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you real soon on the next one.